Good afternoon. We are Mario Alfonso, Jaime Barranco, and Enar Domínguez, and this is our video presentation for uh, the LAS course. And our project is about is about music compression with an autoencoder. So why did we decide to uh, do this project? First of all, we want we wanted to use um, uh, to try uh, using some generative models. But looking on the internet for papers and articles and documents, we found out that um, guns are really difficult to build and train. So we settled for trying an autoencoder. This autoencoder um, will be used to compress an audio file, in our case a music audio file. Uh, so we can see if we can overcome the actual compression systems. For this project, uh, um, for the first steps of this project, we followed uh, this white paper that is linked on the slide. But after some time, we decided to go other ways. So first of all, what is an autoencoder? An autoencoder is an artificial neural network that, le that learns how to efficiently compress and encode data and how to reconstruct this data back from the reduced encoded representation to a representation that is as close to the original input as possible. As we can see in the image, we have, uh, with a moment, we have uh, three main parts. We have the encoder, the sorry, the latent space, and the decoder. Uh, the encoder is fed with an input that, in the case of this image, is an um, image from the MNIST dataset. And the encoder part is a neural network that will learn um, as much as possible about the characteristic of the input. And it will try to compress um, the input to a low dimensional representation. Then, in the decoder will try to reconstruct this low dimensional representation of the input to an output that is as close as possible to the original input as yes, as close as possible. So in our case, what we are going to fed the network is uh, they are images, but they are spectrograms in the frequency domain. So first of all, what we need to do is to convert our audio files to spectrograms. And now Jaime will explain you uh, how we build and how we get our dataset. Well, thanks, Senar. Um, okay, the dataset used for this project is the FMA dataset, which is an interactive library of high quality legal audio downloads. This is open and easily accessible, suitable for this kind of projects. It provides 917 gigabytes of Creative Commons licensed audio from more than 100,000 tracks with their corresponding artists, albums, and genres. They come along with metadata and tags such as biographies and more. There are various sizes of MP3 encoded audio data, which goes from small sets with 7 gigabytes to full sets with near 900 gigabytes. We used a small one for this project as we thought it was enough having 8,000 tracks. Um, if we wanted the network not to be so huge with thousands of millions of parameters, we had to do something related to the dataset apart from other actions that Mario will explain later on. So we came up to the idea of splitting each audio file into 10 chunks of 3 seconds each. This would imply to reduce the spectrogram images 10 times, and so the network overall. This also would imply having a higher number of images than before, and Google Drive was not the better workflow for this, so we changed to GitHub, as we did in PRDL, which seemed to be better handle a big number of small files. Uh, as Sinara commented before, we needed to convert audio files into spectrograms, but there is not only one way to obtain them. At first, we used the STFT, but we got very bad results when reconstructing the image from the spectrogram, as the face was lost in the process, and the resulting audio was not good. 
So we went for the NDSCT instead, with no face problem, but one different. That was that we were losing the sign on the weight by using the log function of the absolute value of the spectrograms. We tried different strategies to correct this situation, such as using another function with no sign like hyperbolic tangent or sigmoid, or even reducing the color resolution to 7 bits, but we finally opted to store the sign as a matrix along with the images. Um, this done, the rest of the process was scaling the image into 0 to 255 levels, having a store the min and max values, and then save the resulting image. And now Mario is going to explain you the network architecture and the results. Well, thanks Jaime. Now we are going to review the architecture of the neural network itself. Well, our neural network is composed by two symmetric parts, that are the encoder and the decoder, on the autoencoder architecture. Each part is symmetrical and is composed by two blocks, composed each block of another two convolutional blocks. Uh, this means that each convolutional block is composed by a convolutional layer that is using strides uh, with a number of two, so we are not using pooling layers because the strides do perform the same operation. Then we are using a leaky relu as a activation function and finally a batch normalization layer. Uh, this uh, convolutional layer is repeated, the, the convolutional block is repeated using the same number of filters and then another block comes with two convolutional blocks inside using another number of filters. In this case we are using one block with two convolutional blocks of 64 filters and another block with two convolutional blocks of 32 filters. The decoder is exactly the same but in the opposite way and using a con convolutional transpose layers instead of traditional convolutional layers to undo the operation performed by the convolutional layers. As we can see the number of parameters is very 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 large, is uh, five, uh, 500 and 37 million of parameters and this is not the largest the largest uh, model we tried but the biggest one we managed to fit into the memory of our GPU so mm, this is not like the, the best uh, option available but the best we could uh, implement and deploy. As you can see the general structure is as follows with an input layer that takes the image and then the encoder that uh, transforms this image into a latent space and finally the decoder takes this uh, information on the latent space and reconstructs an image that has the same shape than the, the input layer that is uh, 512 times 128 and in grayscale we are not using RGB. What problems did we encounter here? Well most of them were suited uh, to the the environment we are using that was not uh, intended to be used with this kind of very large networks so we were lacking of RAM and video RAM in the GPU also, we need to use very, very large amount of images, like uh, dozens of thousands of images, and they were not precisely low res, as we saw, because they were like 128 times uh, two, 512, is not like the typical 32 by 32 images available in NumPy, for example. In the no, in MNIST in MNIST uh, dataset, for example. Uh, also, uh, flow methods available in Keras like flow from directory or flow from data frame does not they they don't work with uh, for regression. They are uh, meant to be used for classification tasks. So uh, 
we needed to preload in in a in any kind of um uh, of physical memory the the data set as a whole we couldn't we couldn't use flow from directory to extract the images from from a folder sequentially and also we were unable to load the images from a collab uh, using google drive because google drive were unable to open a folder if this folder contained a very large amount of images so once we tried to open this this folder that has all the assets it crashed so finally we ended up using github and cloning the repository into our environment so we could have the asset in in a kind of local space in collab the results uh, as we can see the the performance is not very bad the the mean we are using as a loss function the mean uh, square error that uh, is the one we can see on the screen and it dropped very quickly and then stabilized around dot zero zero six and that were using a compression ratio of 25 percent that means that the latent space was was uh, 25 percent the size of the original image and we tried it also with a 50 percent compress compression ratio and the results were exactly the same after 500 epochs so we are kind of a, a bit we can have a, a bit of certainty that a, by increasing the 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 quality of the network we could bet we would get better results as the bottleneck seem to be on the on the network and not on the compression ratio as increasing the compression ratio doesn't seem to decrease the quality of the reconstruction we can see here at the left we can see the original images and at the right the reconstructed ones that seem like a blurry copy of the original ones and our conclusions are that training uh, CNNs is a very demanding task. Also that increasing the compression ratio didn't uh, decrease the performance of the model, so it doesn't seem to be a problem of the compression itself, but of the reconstruction of the compressed uh, space. Also, we can conclude that a bigger and more finely tuned network will probably achieve better results and also we would in this case need a gpu with more video ram and uh, ideally that has more computational power in order to train it faster and that's all